So let's take a look at this David Pakman show. And this is from 12 years ago. He's going to give us a summary on what the Smith Mundak. So just to give you all some context again, if you just start joining us, the Smith Mundak was initially established in 1948. Then it was amended in 2012. Initially, it was established to allow the prop propaganda to go out to foreign entities, foreign audiences. Then when it was amended in 2012, it gave American citizens access to this very same propaganda. So let's let David Pakman, um, let's let him break it down for us. To the David Pakman Show. We've talked a little bit about the National Defense Authorization Act, also known as the NDAA. There is a new version which includes an amendment that would actually legalize the use of propaganda on the American public, according to Michael Hastings of BuzzFeed. The amendment was proposed by Mark by Mac Thornberry, a Republican from Texas, and by Adam Smith, a Democrat from Washington, and it passed in the House last week. It would basically nullify the Smith Munt Act of 1948, which specifically forbids information and psycho psychological operations aimed at influencing U.S. opinion. Uh, Thornberry says the current law ties the hands of America's diplomatic officials, military and others by inhibiting our ability to effectively communicate in a credible way. What this basically means is they want to be able to use these. They're called information operations to target not only foreign audiences, which we know happens and uh, people here don't care about quite as much, but also to target domestic audiences. Uh, we've seen this done in practice, right? In other words, just because this was kind of against the law, formally against the law, it still is done. Look at what happened with the bill of goods we were sold with the Iraq war, right? I mean, to say, well, it may not have been a formal government information operation. I would even argue with that. I mean, there was a decided uh, effort, a concerted effort to convince people of a certain thing in order for them to support going into Iraq. It was very, very clear. Right. I mean, partial. Let's stop it right here. <sighs> Thankful for David Pakman in this. Thankful for David Pakman. How do y'all feel about this? How do y'all feel about it being legal for our government to give us propaganda? To give us propaganda. I want. I want to read something that I. I've been. I've become. I'm learning how to use Chat GPT more and more learning how to use it. I want to read this. The Smith Mund Act, also known as the U.S. Information Educational Act of 1948, primarily governs, governs the dissemination of information and propaganda by the U.S. government for foreign audiences. The act was designed to authorize the U.S. government to engage in public diplomacy and promote a positive image of the United States abroad. Initially, the act strictly prohibited the dissemination of this government-produced content government produced content which could be seen as propaganda to domestic audiences within the united states however the smith mund modernization act of 2012 amended these restrictions allowing the content intended for foreign audiences to be made available domestically upon request let me ask y'all this when you say upon request is that just flipping the channel to msnbc Is that just flipping the channel to Fox? Is that just flipping the channel to CNN? When you say upon request, like what do we have to write a, a letter and say, hey, I want some propaganda, please give it to me? Because when we look at our news stations and come to think about it, 2012, this is when this, this was put into play or amended, I should say. Didn't we see a change or actually it probably happened before that. It happened before that because I believe that the news that our parents grew up watching and even the news when we were younger kids were way more objective, were not filled with bias, and you could tell they were not, they were not pushed by the powers that be, a.k.a. Big Pharma and all these big corporations that donate money to these mainstream news outlets. They were not pushed to just attack agendas for those people. It was, there was a, a certain level of integrity that came with the journalism. There was a certain level of integrity that came with this, how people would give the news, give you the information and let you decide. But then 2012, you have this come around and look at what the news has turned into. Look at what the news has turned into. I wanna give you an example. Matter of fact, after, afterwards, I'll give you an example 
maybe I should stop right now. Hold on. Let me let me give you an example of oh, shoot. Hold on. I want to show you all this. I want to show you all this. I just want to give you an example of how leaning these news outlets that are supposed to be journalists really are. I'm going to give you an example. Hold on. Do, do, do. Watch later. I got a video queued up for you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All we're going to do is listen to the first maybe two minutes. And it's a guy. I don't even know who this is. Some guy named Lawrence from, um, hold on. Uh, Lawrence at MSNBC. I'm not familiar. Not trying to be funny. Just not familiar. Um, sure, he doesn't know who I am either. Maybe he does, though. You never know. I want y'all to take a look at this. I want y'all to take a look at what our news outlets have turned into. Take a look at this. The animal kingdom has horrified. Robert Kennedy Jr., the Jeffrey Dahmer of the animal kingdom, has horrified his family almost as much as Jeffrey Dahmer horrified his family. He's calling this man a serial killer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Let's look up who was Jeffrey Dahmer. Like in the first nine seconds, you're calling RFK Jr. Jeffrey Dahmer twice. Let's look up who was Jeffrey Dahmer. Shout out to chat GBT. Always holding it down. Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer and sex offender who murdered 17 young men and boys between 1978 and 1991. His crimes, which, which took place primarily in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, involved rape, dismemberment, uh, necrophilia, and cannibalism. Wow, cannibalism. Dahmer was known for luring his victims to his apartment with promises of money or alcohol before killing them. He often kept body parts as trophies and engaged in gruesome acts of mutilation. Hold up. Is this the, the recent Netflix show that was out? Hold on. This is, this is who he's referring. This is who MSNBC. This man, I can, I'm assuming that he's in his 60s, maybe early 70s. I don't know. This mature man who is a journalist, I assume that you're a journalist. This is how you start off a story about RFK Jr. This should show us how scared mainstream media is of RFK Jr. I'm going to restart the show for nine seconds, but this is, I just wanted to be very clear and give context. This Jeffrey Dahmer, this is who he's referring or making a reference to RFK Jr. Hold on. Robert Kennedy Jr., the Jeffrey Dahmer of the animal kingdom, has horrified his family almost as much as Jeffrey Dahmer horrified his family by endorsing the most horrifying Republican presidential nominee in history, the only president who was more of a criminal in the White House than Richard Nixon, who Robert Kennedy Jr.'s father tried to keep out of the presidency by running against him until Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, which instantly, and it seemed permanently, created a beatific glow around the name Robert Kennedy, a name like, I wanted to stop it at so many different points. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And you know why it's ridiculous? And you know the biggest shame of it? Is because whenever you hear RFK Jr. speak, the things that he wants to prioritize, the things that he cares about, the things that he has a history of doing. I know Democrats, when it comes to, I'm a black man. So I know Democrats, when it comes to black folk, have a history of just being able to tell us certain things, what they're going to do, but never doing them. So shame on us for continuing to support and shame on us for validating that that is a behavior that should garnish support. Shame on us. But when you hear it and then you think about RFK Jr., wait, he... This is the same RFK Jr. that did the bed project to help the impoverished community in Brooklyn. This is the same RFK Jr. that fought for impoverished communities who were getting toxic water. But the other um, wealthier communities were getting the better water from New York, one of the greatest public water systems in, in the world, I believe. 
but they were giving the toxic water that was coming from a different source to all the poor neighborhoods. You know, the black and brown neighborhoods. Yeah. The same RFK Jr. that was fighting with the Ramapo Lenape in North Jersey when the Ford plant was putting toxic um, chemicals in their water on their land. That's how they were getting rid of the toxic chemicals. And it was causing a whole bunch of health issues amongst the, the Ramapo Lenape tribe. How do I know? Because I'm a Ramapo Lenape. That's how I know. That's what RFK Jr. was doing. That's what RFK Jr. was doing. So I apologize if my bias comes out when it comes to RFK Jr. Because he actually, and, and I'll be totally honest, I didn't even know that he did this for um, my parent, my, my mom's side of the family, the Native American tribe, Ramapo Lenape, North Jersey. Referred to in some ways as the Jackson Whites. That's a derogatory term. We don't say that. The Ramapo Lenape up there. Look it up. Look up RFK Jr. He was an environmentalist. He was an environmental attorney that was fighting for the rights of the smaller guy. And this is how this guy, Lawrence, speaks about him. This is ridiculous. Aim, which his son has now fully disgraced. Robert Kennedy Jr.'s younger sister, Carrie Kennedy, said, quote, I'm outraged and disgusted by my brother's gaudy and obscene embrace of Donald Trump. And Shame on his sister. Shame on his family. They know who RFK Jr. is. They know his background. They know what he stands on. They also know how grimy the Democratic Party is. This is what you this is what you could have done as a family member. If I got a family member, if my brother is doing something, let's it's, it's just politics. All right. He he I know that Lawrence referred to him as Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, the same guy that was raping people, cutting their body parts up, eating some of their body parts. I know that Lawrence re made it seem like RFK Jr. was similar to him, but he wasn't. So if my brother was coming out and just saying something that I disagree with politically. Do you think that I would get on TV? Like, I'm, I'm sorry to whoever his sister's name. I think her name is Kerry Kennedy. I'm not sure if I misheard it. We don't know you. We don't know you. So it's not as if we just needed to hear from you. You could have said, just like maybe some of your other brothers. I don't know. Just like... You could have said, you know what? We don't need to condemn our brother. Unless you really believe that RFK Jr. is a Jeffrey Dahmer, is a terrible person, why would you even say that? Look at what, if you look at any RFK Jr. speech, this is why I, I challenge people. Look at his last speech. You know what ends up happening, especially with a lot of these Democrats? They won't even look at his speeches. They won't even look at it. They'll just believe Joy Reid and MSNBC. When they say, or they'll just believe Lawrence right here. They'll look at these, they'll look at a video like this on MSNBC and these non-free thinking sheep-like followers, cult-like followers act like they're a part of this blood gang, crip gang. They're just as bad as the gangs when it comes to their affiliation to the Democratic Party, especially it's disgusting when it's black people. It's like a Stockholm syndrome type of thing. These people have violated you, told you that they're going to do certain things for you your entire life, done nothing, and you still just feel this connection with them that will not allow you to leave your abuser. But his family member just thinks that she just has to come out and say, RFK, yeah, listen, listen. RFK Jr. has been honest about his past. He said that he, look, Certain things are going to come out, you know, don't necessarily represent who I am right now. I'll be honest and straightforward about that. But this is what I'm fighting for. This is what I have a history of fighting for. This is my background. These are the things that I've already done. These are the things that I've been standing on. These are the things that I live as a healthy person. Let's keep going. And his flagrant and inexplicable effort to desecrate and trample and set fire to my father's memory. 
Robert Kennedy Jr. told many lies in his speech announcing his endorsement of Donald Trump, including this one, quote, the mainstream media networks maintain a near perfect embargo on interviews with me, end quote, over a year ago. All right, Lawrence, one second, Lawrence. One second, Lawrence, because I want to show y'all something. I would like to show y'all something. So this is something that I came across. Let me open up a new tab real quick. And I'm going to go back to his sister's comments as far as Bobby Kennedy and tarnishing the Kennedy name. That's what they're saying RFK Jr. did. I want to show y'all something. I saw this yesterday.